Welcome St. Peter's community to the second episode of the DVU podcast of 2023. Today's discussion will be on microaggressions and cultural appropriation. Uh, we have a few new people on this podcast. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Can I go for it? Okay. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Santiago. I'm Colombian. I'm a grade 12 student here at St. Peter's and uh, I play on the soccer team. So I just was invited here and I'm here to just talk about whatever they want me to talk about. I am the other new member. I'm Miss LeMay. I'm the chaplain of St. Peter's, and I have been teaching here for 23 years. So we'll first start off with culture appropriation. So many may not know the difference between culture appropriation and culture appreciation. From my understanding, culture appropriation is using or taking someone else's culture without acknowledging um, the meaning behind it or why that is so important to that culture. Would any of you guys like to expand further on that? <laughs> just looking around. So with cultural appropriation, and again with my understanding is that if you're going to put on, for example, a performance and you're going to say that it is from this culture, you have to make sure that you dig deep and you actually are putting on a performance from that culture. Um, that goes from costumes to foods to anything that's traditional with a culture. You want to make sure that it's appropriate before you either showcase it, talk about it, promote it, educate it. And there's a difference, right, between cultural appropriation and appreciation. You're appreciating a culture, and anybody step in whenever you want, of course, right? You can appreciate a culture, right, by just learning about it, liking it, um, experiencing it, and saying, wow, that was awesome, versus I'm now going to put this on display, or I'm now going to showcase this, and I'm going to make sure that it's appropriate. <clears throat> this came up a lot for us last year, and some of you may have been in the conversation um, last year when we talked to PSU about having culture day and that that came up about whether or not you know are we appreciating or are we appropriating um, you know often kids wanted to come in and, and dress up and things like that and so that was a really important conversation that we had around culture day and we are planning to have another conversation around uh, culture day coming up so it's important to kind of differentiate and have these conversations absolutely <clears throat> yeah I think it's it's hard because like with media and everything, like they just like portray like a culture one way and then people just follow it, you know? Yeah, so it's, it's like, you know, so that's why we have to get more understanding on that type, one culture and, you know, okay, this is the right way, you know? instead of like what's portrayed in like media or like fake news. And there's so many aspects of one culture too. Sorry, exactly. Cynthia. Yeah. No, exactly. right? no. So many aspects. Absolutely. Uh, I was going to touch up on that again actually. Uh, I find, I can't really speak on everyone's experiences, but I find within Latino culture especially, it's very easy to mix everything together into one big melting pot and call it Mexican, yeah. for example. Yeah, yes. exactly. I'm Latino too. So like it's, like someone came up to me and asked, oh, like you're Latina, right? Like, how, like, how's Mexico? How's like, Mexico? Immediately <laughs> grows. Yeah, it's right? So, like, Can you make churros? that's not the only <laughs> Latino country, right? Or, like, Latin. Can't pay. Can't pay. Yeah. Everybody, like, this is like this. That's not appropriation. Mm -hmm. That's not appreciation either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? It's kind of somewhere in between. Yeah. That's more leading to ignorance. <laughs> yeah. 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 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And unless we share the cultures with each other, we're not going to know. Mm -hmm. Right? We can't embrace. I was gonna jump in and say something because I relate to what he was saying. Is uh, like I come from Nigeria. People would always be like, "Oh, uh, uh, how was Wakanda?" That's another thing. Uh, uh, that's that's about about oh, oh, man. Man. Or like, and she was like, "Are you from Wakanda?" Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, "But she's little, so." <laughs> That's or, interesting. Or like they, sorry to interrupt you, but like they portray as like, oh, African culture, it's always like poor. Poor. Yeah. No. Yeah. There's kings and queens, African kings and queens. The richest. They political. They actually stole resources. <laughs> <laughs> every culture has hierarchies. Yeah. Yeah. Every religion, every, every race, everything, and, and it's unfortunate, right? Uh, who builds these hierarchies, right? And, and that's when everything, I think, gets distorted. Right. Right? And we we have to seek truth. We have to find the common ground. And I think that we need to not be ashamed to share our culture and our background and our heritage, right? Mm -hmm. So people can come to appreciate. Yes? Makes sense? Yeah. Do you want know, to talk about their culture? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that's because well, that's one of the questions that we got on the Google form. Um, like, what are each of our heritages are and, like, what one thing is, like, different from what we see like with other, so like me and Santiago are Latino, but we might have like 
different, you know, stuff that we do, right? Oh, okay. uh, sorry, where are you from? I'm from Uruguay. Uruguay, yes. Yeah. You can't. Um, yeah, so. You can't compare. Well, you can compare the two, but you can't mix it all together. Right? Yeah. Very yeah. different cultures. Some things are similar. Some of the foods are similar. Some of the uh, hair, like the. They both speak Spanish. Both speak Spanish. <laughs> both usually Catholic religions. Mm -hmm. Some um, of the dance. Some of the dance. Some of the music. Similar, some of the music. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't just mix it all together and really try to appreciate it all at once when you really have to understand the certain differences in cultures between the two. Yeah, like There's you can't make things like a monolith. Like exactly, they're all their exactly. individual things. You can't just call it South American. One culture. thing I wanted to say is when it comes to the topic of cultures and like your background, people <laughs> usually base that off of stereotypes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All the time. So if you say, hey, I'm African, they'll be like, oh, isn't that where, you know, they'll always base it off of stereotypes. Because that's all they know. Because that's, that's all they know. know. <clears throat> that's and that's where media know. comes in as well. That's like, exactly where you see it. In. We have to hold media accountable for yeah. the stereotypes they portray. And even though there could be some, like, subvertation of these stereotypes to make it more positive, really just uh, um, uprooting the negative stereotypes and all stereotypes that like don't really portray things accurately, they gotta be held accountable. Studios and uh, different types of media gotta be held accountable for what they do and how they portray different cultures or if they're not even portraying it correctly in the first place. Mm -hmm. So what are the steps we can take to acknowledge the different cultures or to educate ourselves and learning and appreciating that culture? I think, I think we just have, to, you have to ask questions. Like don't always just go to an assume. You know, like, okay, like, your friend tells you they're Latino, don't say that, like, they're from Mexico. Like, don't assume right away that they're from Mexico or from Nigeria, or, sorry. What um, Yeah, what <laughs> right? So, don't, yeah, don't assume, ask questions, you know, like, it, Questions yeah. are good. Yeah. I think one thing is you just have to teach, like, you have to try and teach yourself because that's information that it's not always shown and if you want to learn about a culture, if you want to learn, oh, hey, I have a friend that's Latino. Oh, okay. You got to do the research yourself, ask them questions, make sure they're appropriate questions, you know, not just based off of stereotypes. Like, oh, okay, you're Latino, so you're Mexican, you eat churros, you go around, you know, like, you know so you have to big earrings, like, <laughs> try to learn. And ignorance is a big thing in it, so you can't just be on one point of view. I like to know? explain on that. You got to keep it open mind. You yes. have to, if you're going to try to open yourself up to different uh, different things that aren't what you know, you got to keep an open mind, listen, it might not be what you expect, but you might be what you need to hear, what you need to mm. learn, what you need to do to be better. Yeah, and, and also, sorry, I didn't know you were going to yeah, start continue. coming. Um, yeah, keep it an open mind, but like not to always, like right away, just go to get offended. Yes. Like, you know, if like someone asks you a question that might be offended, but don't like take it as that. You know, like, if they're trying to learn, don't, you know, like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, don't, like... People um, don't want to learn if, like, they get cut off. Because it's like they're asking out of curiosity and, like, genuine interest. Exactly, exactly. That's kind of, like, where <clears throat> issues can happen. Like, if someone just doesn't know the right language or doesn't know the right questions and they're trying, and if they get cut off from different resources, then it fuels, like, more hatred exactly. in them, which can be... You can't respond with anger because that doesn't breed any mm -hmm. positive yeah. anything. Yeah. And the more you travel, the more you're exposed to different cultures. I could just share really quickly. When we were little, um, we never went to all-inclusive resorts. Uh, my father was really adamant. Like, he was strict on, we're going to immerse ourselves in the culture. So we would eat at restaurants, you know. We would, like, inside the culture. We didn't eat at, at the hotel. Mm -hmm. So I had an opportunity to see what culture was like. And that's why I loved different, diverse cultures since I was little. Be I think because of that experience, I wasn't a well, we weren't afraid as a family to um, to just meet people and learn different languages and eat different foods and, and you know, experience different music. And, and I think what's really important that I think we're all saying that's a common theme here is, you know, ask questions, educate yourself, don't make assumptions, right? And because when we do that, which is our next topic, is it leads to microaggressions. It's, do you want to talk about what that is? Sure. So from my understanding, everyone has a different perspective. Um, from my understanding, microaggressions are like indirect comments that may be offensive without ac you actually knowing. It's offensive towards maybe a race or ethnicity or um, gender or age. It could be sexism. Yeah. So yeah. 
Mm. Anybody mm. ever experienced any of that or or witnessed it? Um, so, um, go ahead. Okay, I, I didn't know if I could give it if I could share. Uh, usually when I introduce myself, I always do it twice. Um, I start off with the correct pronunciation, uh, pronunciation Santiago. Uh, from that's what I heard going. Up. That's what my <coughs> mom said. My dad said. My entire extended family says it like that. However, I find that when I when I say it, I also have to say it with the died down pronunciation. I guess I would say uh, Santiago. Very easy to say for um, Canadians. Santiago. Yeah, I as well. Me too. Go go go! I love it. Um, I tell people to call me Amy now because elementary school and like high school, like because I'm in grade 11, right? So everyone said my name like Aminata, like but it's Aminata. Like you need to add like that kind of accent, right? Because it's like African, but then like my family's like Latin, Latino too, so they use that, like you know. Very <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That little spice. So it's like, it's like, yeah. It's and don't be afraid to say it wrong. Yeah. I say it wrong 50% of the time, and I still try. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying is good, but it's a very, very, it's a very thin line between... I think... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. 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 <laughs> With names, I think you do get tired of saying how it's pronounced sometimes. So even like for my job, I would say, hey, my name is Shy instead of saying Nashaya, because for my whole life, Nashia, Natasha, yeah. you know, yeah. it's just... I think and we've gotten used to my, uh, uh, you know, sorry, sorry. making our names more <laughs> easier yeah, it's to pronounce. Like, I think oh, we've gotten used to making other people comfortable. Yes. yes. Which, Love is, it. which is like yeah. sad because those are beautiful <laughs> names. Yeah. And, and we're like kind of losing like our culture. Like, in a yeah. way, like, yeah. Like, my, um, changing our name. My name is Asosa, but I've heard Isiosa, Isosia, Isosa. <laughs> so when the teacher... It's like, oh, okay, I'm going to say attendance now. And they pause. I'm like, I'm here. <laughs> no. Yeah. People no. made fun of me in elementary school. My real name is Manushka. Manushka. It has to be Manushka. I know. Yeah. We went to elementary school you together. Said, yeah. 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 I never let anybody know right. my real name. Right. And I just said, Manon, for sure. like Jennifer Jet. I kind of use that analogy. But actually, Manon was created to make other people feel comfortable. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Can you believe that? Yeah. Man, that's I, exactly what everyone needs. Rhymes with Shannon. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very, it's a very, it's a very thin line. I'd like to say, you know, between when they try to pronounce my like actual pronunciation back to me, between like them actually attempting to say my name properly mm -hmm. and them just mocking my yeah. accent. Right. Yeah. Names is just one form, right? Mm -hmm. What are other areas where we need to, you think maybe as a society, as a community, we need to work on not using those microaggressions mm -hmm. and having them happen so that we all learn because I'm sure that as a teacher, I have used microaggressions without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. And through my own ignorance, 100% I know I have, and I am so sorry. But it's, it's a learning curve, right? This is, you know, it's learning. I, I want to I wanna start, a, like, something, okay? But it might, like, bring, you know, controversial or whatever. The statement, where are you from? Now, there's two sides to this. Like, I feel like me even, like, like, I don't know. Like, you know, like, like if someone asks me that, I'm not going to go, like, straight. Like, what we were saying, like, open mind. Like, we're not going to be offended, like, straight away. But some people do. There's like know? where you ask the question. Yeah. Yeah. When the question where are you from, it depends on the deliverance of the question. So if I if someone comes to me and says, Where are you from? I say, Oh, Canada. They'll be like, No, but where, where are you see, from? See, and then that means that they're talking about your background or your ethnicity. Yeah. Right. And they right. could just right. ask what is your ethnicity about exactly. they're looking yeah. for. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I, it just depends on how the deliverance of the question and how they're saying right. it yeah. and then and if, you, know? and if you keep on telling them oh okay i'm canadian they'd be like but no where are you really so they expect a different canada. language i mean they, they expect like a different country me to say somewhere is like you know africa or something somewhere's in africa yeah and then they, they assume <laughs> <laughs> the same color comes from yes. right because your parents are from canada as yeah. well right <laughs> so you might see oh like okay her skin color is black she's from her parents are going to be from Africa. Must be no. Yeah. Like, that's, not like, that's assumption. where assumption comes in as well. Assumption, right? yes. So, you know. <clears throat> you know I, I, sorry, go for it. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm African, I'm Nigerian. So when I tell people I'm African, the first thing I get is like, 
do you guys have water? It's like, no. is there lions running that's around in your streets? Yeah. I'm like, that's, is that a microaggression? That's what? Well? Macro. Yeah. 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 The reason why some of that comes up is mostly because, like, yeah. oh, media. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all the media, yeah. all they portray Africa as it like, it's like, like a really like foundation. Like, 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 so like, 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 of the 10 cents that you yeah. give to that charity yeah. is going towards Africa building wells or something, and you know? Africa is an entire continent. Yeah. Too. People get made yeah. more than like two exactly. countries. Exactly. That's, it's a wall. You know? Yeah. So that's another thing. Like, sorry to cut you off, but like, when someone says, like, you're from Africa, okay, but like, which part? You know? Yeah. yeah. Like, what country? What country? Wakanda. What's the wrong answer? And even if you told them which part, even if you didn't know much about it, to even identify. Oh, exactly. You know what I mean? Another so. thing, um, I feel like this is not really, like, you don't hear this a lot, but, like, not everyone in Africa is black. Like, South Africans. South Africa. Elon Musk. He was yeah. born in South Africa. <laughs> and yeah. It's not, yeah, and it's not just black people. Like, the yeah. northern part, Morocco. there's Egypt. Morocco. Morocco. Big Arab name. Right? You guys, I was yeah. once asked a question. Speaking of the is color of skin, skin, I was asked, how many black students do you have in your school? Can you count? Yeah. And, yeah. No, yeah, you know what I said? You I can't, can't count. That's the problem. I can't. Right? I don't know how people, A, identify, mm -hmm. and B, I can't tell by the color of someone's skin if they're black. And then I said, what is black? Mm -hmm. You know what I like. You know what I mean. As I was educating myself, how do I know? You can have somebody so light, but they're black. Mm -hmm. that was and how am I gonna say no? You're not black. You're this. You're that. Like, I, and why is it even yeah, important what, to know? Find that question. I think why yeah, that's need to know? another thing. Like, what is like black? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, are we talking about skin color, background? Culture. Like, Culture. I'm pretty sure when we cut ourselves, we all have the same blood underneath. Yeah. 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 You know and. Anyways, that, those are my thoughts. <laughs> it almost seems too like because we know that these microaggressions are going to come up. We know that this yeah. is going to happen, and we need the skills of how to tell yes. someone. You know how that question should have been posed if you asked me this, and then I had no problem answering that. So I think it's more and like you said, we don't want to be offended every time someone asks mm -hmm. because a lot of times people may not know, mm -hmm. and then that discourages them from asking questions. Mm -hmm. right, right. But to kind of come back with. You know what? If you had to ask me this way, that would have been much more appropriate yeah. to ask me that. See, it's about like educating ourselves and others, right? Like that's yeah. Really yeah. Something that Another I'm big thing, <clears throat> hair. <laughs> <laughs> like when I have my natural hair out, some people touch it. Mm -hmm. um, there was a one time I was volunteering, and, like a lady grabbed my hair and started playing with it, and she's like, "It's so beautiful." Like. I just let I just let it go because she was old, so it's like, <laughs> yeah. fine. Yeah, but like you don't like. When was it ever normal to go up to someone and just grab their hair and start touching it? Like yeah, like, like even like my natural hair now, like just touching in general shouldn't. Ask me first, maybe, but like I don't want anyone to like. I don't even think like you guys. Not yeah. even at, like, like no one should be having. Yeah, that exactly. Close. Like not even African like people or like black people like anyone like. I don't want anyone touching my hair. I like, think you know? one thing, since um, for black people in the black community, is <clears throat> how do you feel about people of for different backgrounds and different cultures? That's where great great cultural appreciation and appreciation uh, comes in as well. That's right? exactly what I you know. Mm -hmm. Wait, that's so true. <laughs> like, are you insulting yeah. somebody? Like, I got yeah. raised on yeah, 20 years ago when I was in Bahamas. Yeah. And to me, I was appreciating. I loved braids. And when I took it out, my hair was, you know, beautiful because I had such flat hair, right? So I loved it. It was temporary. I wasn't trying to be anyone other than me. Yeah. I was just wanting something so I didn't have to do my hair while I was at the ocean and I thought it looked pretty. And that's good. We know Miss Heron is a very open person. We know, like, when you support your Yes, exactly. Absolutely. I'll be Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's awesome. With certain people, like, I've seen some people get their hair done in braids and they'll be like, oh my gosh, this looks so ghetto. 
No, no, no. That's, yeah. that's, that's putting a stereotype you know, as well. A person needs Which education for words. Media that's that's part of the right? they, said that. they said that's so ghetto. Yeah. yeah. We, we need to really no. re-educate people and have the courage to tell people, I know that maybe you didn't, you know, have ill will when you were saying this, mm. but try to reword it this way. And I yeah. think that's a cultural shift that's slowly happening. Yeah. Having these kind of conversations and, and talking openly because it's not easy to talk like this. I think it's not. Another thing with like doing like braids and stuff, there's um, protective hairstyles. Like people with different hair types will try wearing certain types of braid and like braids and like it will damage their hair because it's not for that type of hair. So I feel like you have to like know what that style is that you're doing. And also people will like rename Mm -hmm. hair. (laughs) It'll be like a type of braid and they'll like just name it something different to be more like western and i'm like there's a yeah name. mostly like you know when famous celebrities let's say yeah. like if someone like kim kardashian <laughs> yeah. braids, and then you come to school with like you know the same kind of braided ponytail or something yeah. they'll be like oh that's the same like as kim k yeah. like, no <laughs> it's not and you know so it just has media is a big thing and yeah. everything but right now so it's just you you don't want to feel offended but you do in a type of way, but you still want to educate. So learn through making connections and educating yourself versus just what the media is trying to um, make you think. And as we are slowly wrapping up podcast number two, any last minute thoughts? This was a great deep conversation. It was. There was a lot of things that you wanted to say. Yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah. no, we can uh, continue yeah. next week. And don't forget, we're going to have the Google form as well in the classrooms when you watch podcasts too, right? And we can, you know, go deeper next week, right? And you can ask any questions. There was something, um, I've had like a lot of struggles with accepting my hair growing up because of just the beauty standard. Like even like people my color were like straightening their hair and I thought like in order to be pretty you have to have straightened hair. Yeah. And I begged my mom so much but she said no and she would never allow me to do it <laughs> until I learned to appreciate my afro. And like I wore my natural hair once at school for grad pictures and like I, so, I got like so many weird looks mm-hmm. for my hair because it was up in a bun, it was poofy and stuff. And even wearing extensions, someone was like, why do you wear fake hair? Is it because you don't have hair? Mm. I'm like, no, it's a protective hairstyle because for my hair texture, I can't wear it out mm-hmm. like every day or also damage it. So this is yeah. my way of maintaining my hair. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah, so see, like, we try to be ourselves, and then it just goes another way. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of ignorance Yeah. So maybe we do need to have podcast three, continue these conversations as we dig yes. deeper, yes? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's just to finish us off. Uh, thank you for listening to the second podcast, and I hope you are open to having those class discussions and stating how you feel in a polite way <laughs> and <laughs> showing inclusivity. Uh, inclusivity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.